Um, yeah, we've seen this regulatory crackdown spread from China to South Korea now. Is it fair to draw parallels to the two? What makes it different? Um, no, I would say um, it, will, it will be the same uh, because, well, China, is, as you know, um, it's a, uh, the, the Communist Party actually, um, you know, governs the country. So uh, that's a very different situation from Korea. But nevertheless, um, you know, this regulation on uh, big techs, that's a global um, trend. And uh, we are seeing that, you know, just starting to happen in Korea. And, you know, Korea, uh, the domestic market is a relatively small market. So uh, once, you know, these uh, big techs gain um, really a lot of dominance and encroach upon, you know, mom and pop's um, shops um, business, then the regulator starts to uh, worry. And I think we are just about to um, see that um, happen. Okay, and I think it's worth reminding our viewers, to your point, James, that even before this started, valuations were already quite high. With the correction you've seen, and I know you're still keeping an arm's distance, really, uh, from, from these names there, is there a specific level on price or valuation that would entice you to come back in, still given the uncertainty out there? Um, I think we'll have to uh, monitor uh, quite a lot of things. and. Um, even within uh, the big tech, I think uh, the performance could actually be uh, quite different. Um, you know, one, uh, a, a certain companies have more exposure um, outside of Korea and showing, um, you know, great growth potential there. So you would have to um, find some relief there. And then also the nature of the business model um, can be somewhat different. Um, for instance, you know, certain companies would focus more on the the real um, core platform business, which are you know um, difficult for small and medium enterprise to do, um, so you would need a big tech to do that. Whereas you have other company which does you know um, a, more of a overlapping business with the um, SMEs. So there you want to be careful. And and lastly, the valuation um, there is some you know uh, differences in uh, valuation as well. So uh, you know you you would see a differentiated performance. James, isn't it a bit rich, them talking about the power and valuations of these companies when you've got these sprawling chables effectively controlling this country? And perhaps, could this be seen as them dipping the toe in the water before they do something about that, or is it just a red herring? Well, um, as I mentioned, I think, uh, you know, um, the, the big techs have been, as you've mentioned, sprawling and, you know, perhaps uh, being now viewed a little bit more like a chevel. So it's different if you look back you know, a couple of years ago where uh, they were really touted as a, uh, you know, innovators and disruptors. And now, you know, the market is worrying maybe perhaps they have too much power. And one thing that um, there's another contrast is that a lot of the Korean traditional chevels, um, they've uh, expanded their business a lot more to the overseas business. So, um, you know, a lot of the growth and valuation actually uh, comes from that overseas business, whereas, um, you know, these big tech businesses are still um, majority reliant on the domestic business. So I think that puts, um, you know, a little bit of an interesting uh, perspective uh, to how to view these um, group of businesses. Uh, James, hold on a second. Uh, we are getting some breaking news uh, across from China here. This is the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology. Uh, in a presser, the minister, Xiao Ya Ching, saying that China has too many EV startups and they need to consolidate. That is the latest line coming through from this oppressor supporting M&A in the EV market. That's according to the minister. We're taking a look at some of these EV stocks in China uh, and Hong Kong listed here, and they are falling here today. Not sure if this is kind of just part of the whole tech uh, re retreat that we're seeing today, but of course we're, we are seeing here potentially more of this regulatory risk uh, in the EV sector. Dave. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, we're, we're tracking uh, some of the names are falling. Uh, Xpeng's down 2.6 percent, but I should note it was down already 2.6 percent even before the news came. We're also watching the likes of guys. Do we have a board of these? Uh, can we get it up? At least our viewers can see them, too. Uh, so we're looking at Lee Auto. We're down about 1.4 percent as far as that is concerned here. Again, we're looking uh, at more of these comments coming through and we are getting one more here that China has built over a million 5G base stations as of August. 
Um, it, it's hard to over-speculate really what this means, or speculate to begin with, um, whether or not they are indirectly asking uh, for fewer players in what's increasingly becoming a crowded market, not just automakers, but some of your big tech names like Xiaomi also. Uh, Xiaomi and Baidu have also basically just also threw their hat in, in the ring here. Uh, Rish. James, just well, get, get it, getting back very quickly to, to this character, just give us a sense of what, how you feel about the overall Korean market very, very briefly. Um, yes, uh, I remain uh, cautiously optimistic. Um, I think for the next you know, um, several months, it will be a difficult, difficult period um, just because of the global concern on you know, um, inflation, tapering, and so forth, as well as, you know, um, traditionally uh, in Korea, September and October, you've seen a lot of uh, weakness because of the capital gains tax um, efforts for the investors to avoid that. So you're going to see some weakness. But um, nevertheless, I think the fundamentals are still remain quite resilient and the markets have already priced in a lot of the worry. So I think it's time for, you know, this several months to um, time to accumulate actually uh, purchase and uh, I think uh, once we pass that I think we'll we'll have a, a you know quite strong recovery